Hey guys, Christina here, and today I have a look for you at the books we read in July 2019. Now, if you've been following along for a while, you know that this used to be what we read in our homeschool, but honestly, it's just what we're reading, so I decided to switch the name up a bit. So we're not currently kind of in school right now, so we're not doing a family read aloud. However, we are still doing audiobooks, and we just finished listening to The Green Ember, and it's by S.D. Smith. Now this is a book I'd heard a lot about and my kids were just like, no. They kept vetoing it. We don't want to hear about bunnies. Um, but I finally said, let's just try it. And you know what? They absolutely loved it. And it's not just about bunnies. It's quite an adventure story. And I found it a little confusing. I'm more of a book person where I can like open the book and go back and look who is this person? Why were they doing that? Um, but my kids were able to follow along. And they liked it so much, my husband liked it too, that we're actually doing the second book now, which is called Ember Falls. And so we're probably about an hour and a half into that book. And so far they really like it as well. So definitely not just about a bunny. <laughs> so then um, we've also been doing books from this series here. This is Cloverleaf Books. This is Gabriel Gets a Great Deal. But it's a whole bunch of big books on different financial things like budgeting, saving money, um, loans, things like that. I'll give you a quick look inside. It's quite a large book. Um, but we've kind of just been going through those to get some basic financial information and stuff to the kids. And there is a page at the back that has like glossary answers. And there's also at the very back here, um, learn more section as well. So these have been really good. These have been helpful and just kind of helping our kids with financial literacy. And then the kids. So my 11 year old son, he finished reading this book here, Dawn by Eleanor H. Porter. And this is the, from the Good and the Beautiful Library. He said he really liked it. He really enjoyed it, which for an 11 year old boy to find a novel, yay. <laughs> um, I'm still going to read this. This is one I want to read. So I'll let you know once I read it more about it, but he really enjoyed that. And then all of my three boys, they really like Pokemon. Oh, these books are backwards, they're so confusing. Um, they like these books. They seriously get out at least 12 to 15 a week. So they've been reading those plus other comic books. My 10 year old son, he had read a whole bunch of these magic treehouse books. My eight year old also read a whole bunch this month. These are just ones from our shelf. They also got some from the library as well. They also both read a bunch of the um, A to Z mysteries. These are just short little books. I think my, who was it? Yeah, my eight year old, he read like the whole series that we had. My eight year old also read this one. This is a book he really likes. And then they both read these books here. We found, I think this was the new one we found at Second Hand Shop. They like this series, they're short as well. Very similar to kind of Magic School Bus, Magic Treehouse type stuff, Canadian Flyer series. And so they read those books. Then my five-year-old. So she has been working on Canadian Flyer, Danger Dinosaur. She's just been reading a few sentences at a time. Um, she's page 24 right now. So she's been working on that slowly. She gets lots of early readers and some graphic novel type things and some comic book type things from the library as well. And then she's also been reading this book here. This is the Gin Basic Readers. It's um, a Canadian series of early readers that used to be used in schools. This is on Cherry Street. This is like the grade one. I love these books. I found, it's a hardcover. I found this with the grade two and three ones at a thrift store last year. And they're just, simple stories, but they have these beautiful, beautiful pictures. Look at that. Just look colorful, entertaining, perfect for her age. And so she's been enjoying reading those and I really, really love these readers for her. So then me. So I finished reading um, A Cup of Tea and an Aspirin by Helen Forrester, I believe. Um, and it was really good. I like that book. Um, like I had said before in the previous video, my family's from England. My grandfather was a um, fireman um, at the airport, the landing strip during the war. It just, I really liked the book. I could relate a lot to it. So I finished that one. 
I also got the Quintland Sisters back and that's by Shelly Wood. I had started it and then I had to return to the library. I was able to finish it and I found it so fascinating. Um, anything to do with like the Quints and their family I think is really interesting. It's interesting Canadian history. Um, I would love to go to the museum they have someday. But I really enjoyed the book. The ending, something kind of happens that I was not expecting and I was a little disappointed how it ended. Um, but again, overall the book, it is fiction, but it's based on the actual life of the Quintlon sisters, um, the Dion Quintuplets in their life, so very interesting. Then I went back to Helen Forrester and read her autobiography called, um, I think it's two, two Pence to Cross the Mercy, Two Pence to Cross the Mercy. That was really interesting, very eye-opening. Helen Forrester ended up eventually moving to Alberta, where I live, and writing um, books from here and she was also a social worker in England in the Liverpool area which is my background as well so I just found so much interesting um, about her story and about the hardships that she went through and just some real contradictions to kind of today she, there was one point she was talking about um, the children had no food and the whole notion of like someone giving milk free milk to the the school was just preposterous. Like, why would you give children free milk? Whereas today, that's very normal. As well as some of the local churches building large churches and cathedrals, very rich. Yet the people were literally starving to death around them. So, really fascinating if you're into kind of um, real stories and stories about things like kind of the social work field or kind of humanity. It's a great read. Highly recommend that. Then I went on to read this book. This is called Eyes to See, Recognizing the Lessons in Our Lives by Ardith G. Cap. It's a really short book. It's only that big. I'll just read you a bit. Um, it talks about, in our very busy lives, we may look but not see the things that really matter. We may listen but not hear the whisperings of the Spirit. We may think but not ponder with an eternal perspective. Um, and she just goes on to talk about providing insights that can change the way we see ourselves and our life experiences both the positive and the painful, to bring greater happiness and spiritual buoyancy. And again, this book, this author is from Alberta, and she talks a little bit about um, the area and growing up here. But I thought it was just a quick, good, spiritual, spiritually filling read, I guess, about just seeing the blessings in your life. And so I read that one. Then I read... Um, What's it called? Smart Money, Smart Kids by Dave Ramsey and his daughter, Rachel Cruz, I think. can't remember her last name, but I'll put a picture in. Um, it was a really good read. I have read Total Money Makeover a number of years ago, but this one's specifically about raising money smart kids. There were a couple things in there I hadn't considered or thought about, and so I'm really glad that um, I read it and actually before I returned it to the library my 11 year old was asking about it and so he actually has it right now he's in the process of reading it um, and hopefully he's gonna gain some great knowledge I will make sure I uh, remember to check in about that next month when he's finished it and what he thought about it and then I've moved on to this book here worry free money the guilt free approach to managing your money in your life by Shannon Lee Simmons um, I'm probably, let's see, I'm about page 60, so a little ways through. Um, she uses a phrase that I don't care for, and I almost put the book away, right away, because I'm not a fan of swear words, and it is technically a swear word, and I didn't like it. But I continue to read a little bit, and she does have some really good things to say so far, so I'm excited to finish it. I just wish she hadn't quite used the phrase she did my thoughts on it. So that's what we read for the month of July in our family, in our home. Let me know what you guys are reading. I love getting new suggestions, so please leave them down below. Otherwise, I hope that this finds you having a great day. Take care.